A former U.S. church pastor who conducted the funeral of an abducted eight-year-old girl almost 50 years ago has now been accused and charged with her murder. Hello guys, I'm Jerry, and today we'll talk about the mysterious death of Gretchen Harrington and how justice was served after almost five decades. Back in 1975, eight-year-old Gretchen Harrington went missing while she was attending a summer Bible camp in Marble Township, Philadelphia. And since then, her death has been a mystery. However, an anonymous woman recently came forward to expose the murder. This woman told investigators that she had a feeling that her best friend's dad might have done something terrible to Gretchen back in 1975. Now, the suspect is already an 83-year-old retired pastor named David Zanstra. Mr. Zanstra is now being accused of kidnap and murder of a minor. The district attorney of Delaware County, Mr. Jack Stolsteimer, said that Mr. Zanstra is now a nightmare to all parents living in Philadelphia. David knew Gretchen trusted him, but he broke her trust and pretended to be a friend to her family. Gretchen Harrington's cold case came back when a book about her death titled Marple's Gretchen Harrington Tragedy, Kidnapping, Murder and Innocence Lost in Suburban Philadelphia got published last year. People started talking about it again, and the police got more clues to try and solve the mystery of her passing. Back in 1975, Mr. Zanstra worked as a pastor at Trinity Christian Reformed Church. Every morning, they had Bible camps at the church. And after that, he would take the children to another church. According to a police criminal complaint, on August 15, 1975, Gretchen was expected to be at Trinity Chapel Christian Reformed Church by 9.30 a.m. along with a group of children. She was supposed to be taken to another church, the Broomall Reformed Presbyterian Church, where her father, Harold Harrington, served as the reverend. However, around 11 a.m. on that day, Mr. Harrington discovered that Gretchen hadn't arrived at his church as scheduled. Concerned, he immediately searched for her and then contacted the Trinity Chapel Christian Reformed Church. He spoke with Mr. Zanstra's wife, and at Mr. Harrington's request, Mr. Zanstra contacted the Marple Township Police Department to report Gretchen missing, as mentioned in the complaint. Over the following weeks, the police conducted investigations and interviewed several individuals to piece together the events surrounding Gretchen's disappearance. They interviewed Mr. Zanstra twice, once on August 19 and again on October 30. During these interviews, he claimed to have driven some children to the church on the day Gretchen went missing but denied seeing her on that particular day, according to the complaint. After a thorough search for two months, skeletal remains discovered near Ridley Creek State Park on October 14, 1975, were later identified as Gretchen's. Her death was ruled a homicide caused by injuries to her head. Despite extensive efforts for decades, the identity of her killer remained unknown, and the case eventually went cold as the police were unable to find any leads leading to the resolution of Gretchen's murder. Sadly, the suspect, David Zanstra, happens to be very close to the Harrington family. He was very helpful during the search for Gretchen and even presided over her funeral ceremony. Investigators said after Gretchen was out of sight from her late father, who had watched her walk up the road from their family home, Mr. Zanstra reportedly asked her to enter his car. During that time, a witness came forward stating that they had spotted a girl engaging in conversation with an individual inside a car that closely resembled Mr. Zanstra's Green Rambler station wagon. The unfolding events raised concerns and prompted investigators to delve deeper into the circumstances surrounding Gretchen's death, but they hit a dead end. Recently, investigators had a conversation with the best friend of Mr. Zanstra's daughter. Shockingly, she revealed that when she was only 10 years old and staying over at Mr. Zanstra's house, she once woke up to see him touching her inappropriately. Additionally, she presented the police with a diary entry dating back to 1975, in which she wrote down her suspicions that Mr. Zanstra might have been the one who kidnapped Gretchen. 
Over the years, Mr. Zanstra had relocated several times, living in various places like California and Texas. However, his past eventually caught up with him, and the Pennsylvania State Police arrested him in Georgia just last week, where he admitted to committing the crime. Currently, he is being held in a local jail, awaiting extradition back to Pennsylvania to face trial for the alleged murder and kidnapping. He is every parent's worst nightmare. This is a man who is a remorseless child. Joanna Falcone Sullivan, along with her co-author Mike Mathis, believes that their book, Marple's Gretchen Harrington Tragedy, played a significant role in uncovering new leads and information about the case. During the process of writing their book, Joanna Falcone Sullivan and co-author Mike Mathis conducted interviews with various individuals related to the case, including Mr. Zanstra. They noticed that Mr. Zanstra had difficulty recalling all the details of what happened on the morning of the incident. Just kind of However, like, his yes, wife had a clearer memory of the events. They speculated that Mr. Zanstra's age might have affected his memory. This deadly crime had a profound and lasting impact on the community. Even to this day, the tragedy remains a topic of discussion among the locals, with many engaging in conversations about it in local Facebook groups. When Mr. Zanstra finally confessed his crime to the state trooper, Eugene Trey, there was a notable sense of relief evident in him. Eugene Trey said, I don't know if he's sorry for what he did, but this is a weight off his shoulders for sure. The confession was seen as a significant step forward in the pursuit of justice. The Harrington family, who had endured unimaginable pain and loss, felt that the arrest provided a sense of closure and brought them closer to achieving justice for Gretchen. In their heartfelt statement, they shared fond memories of Gretchen, describing her as a kind, sweet, and gentle soul who left a profound impact on everyone she came across, even at such a young age of just eight years old. All right, guys, that's all for today. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more chilling solved crime cases.